the University of Applied Science in Munich, Germany, as Rob Rosendahl stated. I have to add a few words before I start the presentation, um, because as you can see there, I call it project proposal. I was a little surprised during the introduction um, presentation that we should create a prototype at home, because that was definitely not communicated in Germany. So, um, there were always used the words project proposal, and that's what we got here. So, feel free to blame our professors, but not me. <laughs> <laughs> so, a short. There were three options. You can do a, a prototype or a proposal. Oh, ah, okay. So, everything's uh, cool. Yeah. Then you don't need to blame the professors. <laughs> okay, a uh, short overview. I tell something about the basic idea, then about the vital science you want to monitor it. Yeah, now you know we want to monitor some vital signs. Um, the type of sensors we want to use, the main parts we want to focus on the, during the development, and the short outview to the future. So, what we basically want to do is to create a smartphone application that together with some sensors, some variable sensors, is able to detect if you have an emergency, and if so, do an automated emergency call. This as you can see in this wonderful picture. <laughs> um, yeah, what we want to do is to be completely on the customer side and not use a large infrastructure and not integrate into a, a large system because when we did our um, preparation week at home in Germany, we started about talking like um, hospital systems and stuff and it was always large infrastructure systems with large and many components, so which I thought we want to stick to the customer side and we want to be a system you're not to f forced to use by a doctor because it always sounded a little like hey, you got this disease now, use the system so I can monitor you and this is what we don't want to do um, we basically want to constantly monitor the user's vital signs and then have some logic that detects an emergency and automatically makes an emergency call and for example, an ambulance, as in the picture before, and this emergency call completely without user interaction. Yes, and as we live in the year 2014, we want to store historical data. So, um, then we thought about it, and nobody of us had any medical background, so we just checked Wikipedia, what are the Vital signs are checked by first responders if they get to a place with an emergency. And Wikipedia told us it's the heart rate, it's the breathing, and it's the consciousness. Uh, though, then we started to thought about, um, think about what we can monitor using sensors. And okay, the heart rate is pretty simple, you can use the pulse meter. And then breathing, we cannot check this directly, but um, we have blood oxygen sensors, so we can use that. And, okay, the consciousness could be somehow checked um, with some user interaction, but we definitely decided we don't want to do it, because if you have an emergency, let's say you're having whatever a heart attack lying on the ground, and then your phone starts to buzz, are you still conscious? Yeah, no. <laughs> so, that is the wild time for the monitor. And what type of sensors do we use? As I said, we get a pulse meter and an oximeter for measuring the blood oxygen. Or we could simply use a pulse oximeter. I would laugh. If we could use some, I wrote to the company assembling the left one, the white one. Um, then they wrote to me, it's a proprietary product and they don't want us to develop something with it. <laughs> yes. And the known one is currently launched for OEM customers only. But the first devices are out. Also, a little more comfortable, not these finger clips. There are devices that are like a, like a clock, for example, that you can wear and measuring this. So, we don't have sensors like this, but our university paid for a pulse meter. Pull up, Finland. <laughs> and yeah, we have to simulate the blood oxygen to do this project. Okay, that's the type of sensors. And now, I'll tell a little about the main part we want to focus on. It's basically the communication to the sensors, the fact of emergency, the emergency call, and the historical data. So, 
the communication to the sensors um, we want to use Bluetooth 4.0 Smart as it's the up-to-date technology and it has a 4.0 Smart Bluetooth sensor yeah, and we have to handle the whole communication and picking of data so then we need some logic to detect an emergency and we need something smarter than this it's, I guess, a good point to start because that's definitely an emergency, but I guess there are <laughs> algorithms out there and there some research to be done because I guess there are algorithms. We won't be the first people on world to develop some algorithms to detect an emergency and there are monitoring systems in hospitals, also they may not be super portable, but I guess they use some algorithms that we can recycle. So, but we need an algorithm that must not detect an emergency if there is none because if you call an ambulance and you do not have an emergency, it's pretty expensive. At, at least it's in Germany, but I guess in every country in the world it's really expensive if you call an ambulance or whatever and there is nothing. So this must be secured in a way. Yeah, then the automated emergency call. Um, need some research too because um, I don't know if there's something like an emergency API or whatever, uh, API or, yeah, because as a last resort, we could always use the recorded call or whatever, or a text-to-speech engine created call. But for example, this red panic buttons for seniors, well, I don't know what happens in the background, but they have to do they have to do something similar. So I guess there are technologies. Yeah, we have to do something with this, and we want to store some historical data, and because we want to store historical data in the phone, we change the picture. And yeah, we need to research a little on what kind of database you want to use because I guess if you store a lot of data, that's always like pulse data, blood oxygen. Um, so the typical relational database would not be the best suiting. And yeah, we also um, somehow um, get to know what data we want to store because I guess if you store a pulse rate and the oxygen um, saturation of the blood for every second, it's just a lot of useless data. So these are the four parts we want to focus on um, to get it up to a running prototype. I guess it's doable and as a short audio what we could do in the future or whenever it's like we could use like more sensor types, uh, blood pressure sensors are available so you could use this two body temperature um, well, I guess there must be sensors because it's the simplest type of sensor, blood sugar, and maybe we could optionally integrate in a larger system as that in the beginning, that this is what we definitely don't want, but um, if you say like you have a disease and your hospital says, okay, we have this system, um, then we could use this application, that the doctor, for example, could use it for live monitoring, but not as a um, key feature, not to, to force the user to integrate in a larger system. Yes, so that was pretty much all from my side. We have some questions. As of now, and you can see a wonderful up-to-date picture of me. I was proud to start. It would be a nice idea to have it. Very nice idea, yes. <laughs>